The number one cause for over foaming in beer in your draft system, especially in the homebrew world, is your beer just being over carbonated. Now, in a number of videos that we've done previously, I've talked about draft system issues and how to fix your kegerator or your system to prevent overcarbonation or over foaming in your beer glass. But if your beer itself is overcarbonated, I haven't talked about how to fix that. So that's what we're gonna do in today's uh, world. Uh, first of all, let's say you are pouring off of one of these. This is a D-system coupler. Um, the same rule would apply if you're on a German coupler, European coupler, anything like that. Uh, but if your beer itself is overcarbonated, what's gonna happen is it's going to be pushing your beer to the back of the faucet too fast and any sort of friction in that line is going to start breaking out gas. And so instead of pouring beer, you're gonna be pouring foam, all the, all the bubbly stuff that comes in with an overcarbonated beer. The only solution to that, if that's your problem, is to make your beer less carbonated. So here we have your D-system coupler, if you're using that. And if you're using a homebrew style coupler, the same thing will apply with the gas side of your corny keg coupler, whether ball lock or pin lock. What you need to do is, first of all, keep your beer cold. This is one mistake that a lot of people do uh, where they uh, think that they need to warm up their beer to release the gas. There is no situation where a zero pressure beer, even at cold temperature, will retain enough carbonation to make your beer over carbonated. So the best thing to do is treat your gas out, which on a D system coupler is this side, or if you're using a ball lock, it's gonna be just the gas side of your ball lock as a blow off. So what that means is pretend this is your gas out. This end is going to go into a uh, solution of sanitizer or something like that to make it so the air can't get back into your system. And if any does, it's going to be sanitary. Um, and you're going to relieve pressure simply by on this, removing your gas check valve and replacing that with your liquid check valve so that air can escape you don't actually have to replace with liquid check valve, but that is helpful. You will want to use your gas check valve to put into where your liquid would normally go in. And what you'll do with that is you'll place your gas check valve into the out port, the probe of your coupler, and make sure that you seal that down so that as you're expelling gas off of this side, there is no new air that can come in through your probe. And also you can't explode out beer while your keg is under pressure. So that does two things. It protects your beer from getting environmental contaminants in there, but it also makes sure that you're not gonna explode beer as soon as you press your coupler down. So check valve on there, or somehow seal this off to make sure that beer can't come out. Make sure there is no check valve on the gas side so the gas can come out, and all you're gonna do is replace your gas side out put this end into a tub of sanitized water, and then you'll compress down onto your keg to make sure that you can relieve the gas. You'll do this for a period until it's not continuously off-gassing. Um, it might be 12 to 24 hours, and then you'll rehook it up to your kegerator, which will repressurize the system, and then you'll check it and see if you're at the right carbonation level or maybe slightly under. If you are slightly under, the good news is your kegerator should be set to a pressure that naturally carbonates your beer to the appropriate levels. If your kegerator is set to 32 to 36 degrees, 38 degrees, then somewhere between 11 and 14 PSI is gonna be the proper pressure for you to use. Uh, and that's going to, over time, carbonate your beer to the correct levels. Uh, if your beer is warmer, then that pressure needs to be lower so you're not getting that gas break out. Same concept applies if you're using a homebrew keg. This is your gas out. Uh, you're going to uh, put your gas out onto your keg and you're gonna let that naturally fob, naturally release that gas over a period of a couple days, still while cold, and that will decarbonate your beer so you can replug it into your system at the correct level of pressure to carbonate your beer properly and make it so that your beer doesn't make that foaming issue. Hopefully that answered that question. If, you, if, you've, got, uh, if you've got more specifics you need on that, um, Hopefully I've got some visuals that are uh, that happened around there uh, besides just my hands that help that out. But uh, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments below and let me know if you've got more specifics you need to know about uh, beer lines and carbonation.